uh, good morning folks uh, or good evening here in Los Angeles where it is about 5 p.m. on the 11th of June and good morning uh, in Sydney Australia where it's June 12th a bright Monday morning at 10 a.m. and we are here going to speak with uh, Doug Crawford who was a North Pointer from 1940 to 1946 and so Doug I'm so happy that you agreed to this interview and you know that there are many other senior North Pointers also that we uh, that revere and, and look up to because we all studied in the same school as you did though not at the same time so thank you for um, agreeing to join this interview Doug so tell me before I ask you some questions how are you doing today? Today is, is fine it's crisp and cold in Sydney in the winter, um, but otherwise it's a nice day. It's a public holiday, and we're shortly going to go to lunch at my daughter's place on the eastern side of Sydney, about an hour's drive away. I can tell you, 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 I can tell you, you look real good uh, in the camera, and and uh, <laughs> you, you don't look, uh, you don't look ninety at all. I mean, I would pass you at mid 70s or something like that. I have friends who are mid 70s who look as young as you. Well, I've, I've been pretty active and fit all my life. We meet twice weekly, trying to keep fit. So, could you please share with us one or two um, cherished memories you have of your time in school? Well, quest, firstly, I don't think I'm an early North Pointer because my understanding of school was there a long time before I arrived. In fact, I've even looked it up in Wikipedia, which showed that the, the date on the current site is, is about um, 1888, no, 1892 on the current site. So by the time I got there, it was well established, very well known around the area. And my understanding was it was considered the prime school in all of southern Asia because we used to have boys pr prior to the war starting coming from Burma and Persia and other places in between and also uh, people coming from Tibet and Sikkim so as far as memories are concerned uh, one of the things that always stuck in my memory was when we returned to Calcutta at the end of the year um, on the train, which seemed to be full of North Point boys. At some point before we got to Harrow Station, I think it was Harrow Station, the train would stop and they'd fit the school badge on the front of the engine and then roll into Calcutta with North Point badge on the front. Was that that memory? And another memory, during the, the monsoon region, if we had an excessive amount of wet days and we had a fine day, then the whole school would gather in a quadrangle and chat up to the rector, we want a holiday, we want a holiday. And mm. inevitably, the request would be granted. <laughs> uh, and the other thing I, I remember was Bert Chill. We used to go for long walks up there, and it was very interesting. Uh, we didn't seem to, I wasn't conscious of any restrictions. We were allowed to go, and we had to come back. I don't remember anyone trying to supervise us on the way. Uh, and another one we had, uh, we'd make uh, hot air balloons out of tissue paper uh, and uh, heat them, hang them from, from a pole in the quadrangle and heat the initial heat with, from a, a primer stove and then when that, the balloon was filled up with, with hot air, uh, socks, old socks soaked in kerosene or something were tied in, they'd be lit, lit up and the whole balloon would go off and wander into the somewhere, I don't never knew where it landed, but obviously once the, the, the socks burnt off, the balloon came down. So they were wonderful days. Uh, I had a wonderful time there. Um, and th there's just a few memories. Uh, there's too many more. We keep going for 
probably a good hour of time I relate all my memories. Yes, that, that, yeah, thank you. This is going to be a real short interview, but thank you. And some of those the memories of yours are so common. I was in North Point from 1964 to 71, and we still had those uh, uh, sunshine holiday requests of the rector. So thank you so much for that uh, common common feeling we all grew up with. Uh, I have uh, the second question here is, could you tell us uh, all about uh, what you learned in uh, school when you were there that uh, has been useful in your life? Well, the thing is it was when I, in our terms here, um, just being with the Jesuit education, I think it just was seamless all the way through. And I, I found it was one of the things you had to do was, was be respectful to others, um, but get involved wherever possible. So um, at North Point, I got involved in the, I suppose, what was it, the second division or something, in the fretwork shop. I don't know if it's still there, but, um, and all sorts of other things. Uh, and likewise, when I got to review, I got involved in similar activities um, there as well. So it was, you expected to get involved. That was the main thing. Yeah, I like that about the fretwork. I remember Bob Moss, Robert Moss, uh, he's your contemporary. He lives in Toronto, and, and he also mentioned fretwork uh, to me last year. Uh, uh, and oh, we did have fretwork while we were there uh, in the late 60s, but it's not there when I visited North Point uh, recently. So thanks thanks for that. I'm glad that, uh, you know, be respectful is one, get involved is another, and, and, and those are real good values to, to have. And, and sometimes I forget myself, so I'm going to keep that close to my heart. Here's my third question. Um, you said that you visited North Point in 2004 with your, five, uh, with your wife, sorry, and, and that was really like about 60 years after you had, you had left. So what kind of feelings, memories, emotions uh, stirred up in you when you actually got into that school after so long? Well, I think the first thing was when we approached there, uh, it had gates on the front drive, which weren't there in my time. And I was told it was when there was some, I think, problems from Nepal um, that were installed. And then going through, um, it, 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 was, it was revisiting something that was so familiar, except uh, I noticed that the main timber stairs, how worn they were compared to what I remember as a boy. But then since then, I also trained as an engineer and probably a bit more concerned about wear and tear and things. But it was still how, how worn the main timber treads were. Uh, there's also, of course, brand new stuff like a swimming pool. Uh, we, that was just wishful thinking in our day. And, and also, I noticed that the senior boys all had their own rooms, uh, whereas in my time, everyone was in, in dormitories. So they were the main sort of things. And also, uh, we were conducted through the... And the kitchen was being upgraded at the time my wife was amazed at the old, very old stuff that we used to feed hundreds of boarders over the years. She couldn't understand how those poor cooks kept going on. But what was, in her terms, very primitive equipment. And all those uh, large cooking utensils, it, it was sort of amazing for us too. How could they cook for 300 boarders when we were there at yes. that time? Yes. Um, nice. That's uh, those are those are great feelings. Um, I have those feelings sometimes myself when I visit. So here's my last and final question, uh, Doug. Um, you know, based on your uh, life experiences after having, of course, graduated from North Point, uh, if there was one thing that you could um, uh, advise or give us North Pointers and especially the young ones all around the world, what would that be? I think respect everyone you come in contact with. Um, that's the main thing, and even if you disagree with people or you have an objection, do it respectfully. Um, now, for example, the other day, trying to get a, a coffee at the local coffee shop, uh, one of the people there wasn't happy with what was served and got rather um, abrasive to the, the, the person serving 
Well, I think, don't think that was necessary. I think, yes, you can raise an objection to Michael, and more than often than not, you get a, a polite, respectful reply. So I think that you treat people the way you'd like to be treated. I think that's the main thing I'd like to carry, recommend to oncoming students. Thank you. That's what I can comment. Sorry, I, I'm, I was silent uh, because I'm thinking about the uh, deep uh, advice that you're giving us. And it's, it's sometimes we forget. I forget myself and it's really good to be respectful. And um, you shared that le recent experience that you had around the corner at the coffee shop also. So. Yes, yes uh, it's, it's a regular thing. I, mean, I find if you are respectful to people, it doesn't matter what their status in life is, uh, you get a good response from them. That's nice. That's so touching. Um, so, just in the interest of time to make all our videos short, people will not get distracted. I, I wanted to um, close in a few minutes, just be, but, but before I close the interview, uh, any last minute thoughts you, you might have uh, to tell anybody? Well, the thing that bothers me at the moment is the state of the world, politics. It bothers me. And um, also is climate change. Now, it, it's not going to worry me. I'm sort of approaching the last decade of my life. Southeast Asia, climate change is going to be a big, big problem. And I'm really worried as to where we're going. Profound as well. So um, once again, uh, Doug, I thank you so much for your time. I appreciate that. And we all will uh, point her with a good spirit and heart. Thank you so much, Doug. Thank you, Ashok, and good evening to you. And I'm sure you're probably looking forward to a better time in the near future. Yes, I hope that we will meet. Thank you, and you have a wonderful day.